Hey everyone, and welcome to a question to the teacher. But before we get started, here's a little joke for you. What's the biggest pan in the world? Japan. <laughs> in this series, we're going to ask and try to answer some of the questions that I wish I would have known to ask when I was starting out teaching. And here's our question for the day. Today is August 20th, 2018, and our question for today deals with watching videos. If you're like me, you realize that videos can be one of the most powerful tools in your teacher toolbox. However, they're only powerful if they're used correctly. Like any tool, a video can become pretty useless if you don't use it properly. And I'm gonna show you a few of my favorite techniques to get the most out of your video watching. So listen up. My favorite thing to do while watching a movie is something called question circling. And this is a type of interactional conversation in which the teacher asks students questions to have them tell you what's happening in the video or on screen. Try to think of question circling as a form of guided discovery that gets students actively engaged by having them respond to our questions, while also building accuracy, fluency, and elaboration. In addition, students are also pushed to use academically rigorous language. One of the best suggestions that I can give you for this type of activity is to take some time before class to sit down and really plan your question circling, because you don't want to leave any good question unasked. I'd like to start out simply with yes, no questions. It makes students show that they remember details with a simple recognition response. You might ask a question like, is Moby a robot? I Next up are either or now. questions. The sun would be and in these questions, in Students show that they can understand the difference by producing a short answer. For example, who has hair, Ben or Moby? Say it wrong. In this step, the teacher makes an incorrect statement to see if students can analyze the language to see if it fits correctly with the story. For example, Moby is from Korea. Moving on to fill in the blank. With this prompt, students show that they can produce a one-word answer in the target language. For example, Annie is doing stand up. Mm -mm. And moving on to simple info questions. These are the who, what, where, when, which, how many, or how much type of questions. With these questions, students show that they can produce a little bit more of a detailed response. For example, who is the baker? What flavor is the cake? Where is Moby? And moving on to something more difficult, we use complex info questions, which are the how do you know that or why type of questions. For example, what is dangerous in this picture? Why is it dangerous? Why is it a bad idea to do this? Why is it a bad idea to do that? And finally, the what will happen next questions. This is where students create a continuation of the story based on what has happened already. For example, what will Moby do after he finishes mixing the cake? What will he do after he finishes baking the cake? What will he do after he finishes eating the cake? And try to remember the old saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. But if used correctly, it can be worth a thousand questions as well. <laughs> 